for thousands of years through science of motion, anatomical studies, and sometimes outright down and dirty trial and error, we've seen countless fighting systems emerge across various cultures. Categories of Kung Fu, Karate, Jiu Jitsu typically top the list, but sometimes if you scroll down a little deeper, you can find some styles you might not have known about. Some are creative, others are just downright brutal. So if you ever wondered if there were any arts that use gunstock barrels or punch people with glass or what Batman uses, or if there happened to be any arts in which fighters had their teeth sharpened so they could bite off their opponent's genitals, then this list is for you. Today, we're gonna to take a look at some martial arts that you've never heard of, probably. Now, as a disclaimer, I apologize if I slaughtered the pronunciation of any of these arts. There are many styles of stick fighting in the world of martial arts, and most people are familiar with the likes of Eskrima and Hema systems. But the truth is, the concept of stick fighting goes back a long way in human history, as a stick is probably one of the most simple and readily available weapons to find or carry. So we start this list off with Batarajt, the art of Irish stick fighting that goes back hundreds of years with the rise of popularity in the 18th century. As is the case with many stick arts, the Irish living under English law were often prohibited from carrying weapons. So like many cultures under oppression, they strategized their fighting by using commonplace items. In Batarajt, practitioners use a hard wood stick called a shillelagh. A shillelagh can be of various lengths and they are customized per user and they can be from a short club to a full walking stick. It is often used with both hands to allow for a wide array of disarms and strikes. Shillelaghs are sometimes covered in blunt thorns that do not inhibit the user from wielding the club, but along with a hard knobbed end can deliver devastating injuries from a single strike. Although this art has slipped into a bit of a zone of obscurity, if you look, you can still find schools teaching the art today, such as the ISF Worldwide by the Doyle family. Tracing the cultural history of Native American martial arts systems can be tricky, as many of their customs and tactics may have been regional or simply passed down verbally. Even though many of today's tactical systems claim to have Native American combat as part of their curriculum, it can sometimes be hard to accurately trace the source material. Enter George J. Lippin, who is the chief instructor and founder of his system, Okichita, Indigenous Combat Arts. Lepin is a Canadian martial artist who began his training at the age of 13 and was a student of Judo, Taekwondo, and Hapkido. He was also born in Manitoba and grew up as part of the Plains Cree First Nations. As a young boy, Lepin also learned wrestling and how to fight with tomahawks, gunstock clubs, and other bladed weapons. He sought to combine the strengths of the contemporary martial arts he had learned along with the combat tactics and traditions of his indigenous heritage. He began to organize and formulate his system in the late 1980s, and it was formally recognized as an art when he presented it at the 2002 Chungju World Martial Arts Festival in South Korea. Okichita is primarily close quarter. It's a hand-to-hand -hand combat system that utilizes quick takedowns, grappling, and deadly weapon strikes. The term no quarter has sometimes been applied, which means this was a no mercy art and that the intention was to quickly smother, take down, and finish your opponent. This one, this one really honestly shouldn't be making this list because it's not technically an organized martial arts system. It is, however, a system of settling disputes using martial practices, and the art part is simply in how creatively you can maim your opponent. Seriously, folks, this was brutal. Rough and Tumble developed in the poor and rural south of the United States in the 1700s. It was not only used as a manly way to settle a dispute, but it was often used as entertainment as well. Disfiguring your opponent, groin shots, scalp ripping, head stomping, and biting were not only allowed, but they were encouraged in these no rule bouts. Actually, there was one gentleman's rule, if you can even call it that, but rough and tumble was also known by the name of gouging. This was in reference to the objective of gouging out one of your opponent's eyes. This was unofficially considered a knockout or winning move of the fight. As a result, fighters would often went to great lengths to weaponize their bodies. They would grow their nails out longer and sharpen them and sometimes even dip them in wax to make them stronger for acquiring said eyes. Some veteran combatants went to such extremes as to file their teeth into sharp points so that they could bite off ears, noses, and in many cases, their opponent's genitals. Some people call this an unofficial origin of MMA because any and all fighting methods were mixed in, but honestly, this was just a messy and brutal system of dueling. 
Thankfully, it began to wane in popularity during the 1800s, so you're not likely to find any institution that teaches this today. But if the question ever comes up again between fighting for sport and fighting for the street, I don't care if you are a traditional martial artist or a mixed martial artist, that's the kind of insanity you may have to find yourself trying to defend against. So be ready, because not everyone sees eye to eye. And speaking of brutal street fighting, this segues us to Pacom, a Peruvian method of street fighting organized and established by Roberto Puch Pezeda. We often use the phrase, what works in the street, a lot in the context of martial arts discussions. The truth of the matter is, when we say the street, that can mean a lot of things and it's highly dependent on the context and setting. It can mean a drunken street fight, defense against a mugging or personal attack, or multiple fighters, but sometimes a street fight can be a matter of which one of you walk away. That is what Pezeda was bringing to light with his system of Pacom. Roberto Puch Pezeda is a former Peruvian army commando, an ex-convict, and highly experienced street fighter. This man has seen things, and in the 1980s, he established his hybrid art that teaches a ruthless system of combat and self-defense. The fights on the streets of Peru were not typically friendly street fights. Pacom is composed of elements of jujitsu, vale to do style of street fighting, and deceptive weapons techniques. It's similar to the concept of Kempo and the effort of overwhelming your opponents with close range techniques, bone breaks, chokes, and vital strikes, but this is amped up way to an extreme. Hiding and deploying knives deceptively is employed, as are distraction techniques to obscure an opponent's view of the weapon. Roberto Pezeda even established the seven formal rules of Pacom. First, study the opponent and analyze their build. Second, Keep calm, use reason, use your mind, and keep your body relaxed and not rigid. Third, always remember that skill is better than strength. Fourth, memorize the weak points of the body. Fifth, never turn your back, never neglect an angle on your body. Sixth, switch and combine different tactics. Surprise is success. And seventh, never give up your opponent and attack him relentlessly. Seriously, folks, there is no fooling around with Pacom. Dambe is a unique form of fighting, and it is speculated that its roots go as far back as ancient Egypt due to the stances and visual cues matching illustrations in from um, Egyptian boxers. Dambe, as we know today as a combat art, is often used for sport that was developed by the House of People in West Africa. It is a striking base system, and it was common for fighters to travel from village to village to take on fights to earn extra money. Many fighters today consider this a profession. What makes Dambe stand out is its method of fighting. Two competitors fight in a match composed of three rounds. Now these rounds are not timed and they will continue to go on until there is a gap in activity or when someone's hands or knee or body touches the ground or if an opponent calls a halt. Wait, they can call a timeout? In all seriousness though, Dambe is no joke and even though it's often for sport and competition, it can still be incredibly dangerous and often results in brutal injuries. The reason is each fighter has their dominant hand wrapped up and bound in a tight cord which makes their arm resemble a clubbed instrument, though they refer to it as a spear. In less civilized times, fighters were known to have dipped their clubbed fists into resin and broken glass. Now we don't need too much imagination as to the kind of damage that could do, and honestly, I'm a little surprised that it wasn't a common tactic of rough and tumble. Thankfully, this brutal enhancement has been outlawed, but the spear is still something you do not want to be on the receiving end of. Fighters often also wrap up their lead leg with a chain so that it can be used effectively as a shield to block kicks or deliver crushing kicks of their own. It never ceases to amaze me all the different ways of fighting people figure out. Today, it's common for Dambe fighters to still compete and travel in fighting circuits. Bokator is a bit interesting because, upon looking into this art, I came across a lot of comments online from people confusing it with Muay Thai. Honestly, in still images, it does resemble Muay Thai, at least on a superficial level. Bokator is believed to translate to pounding a lion, based on the folktale of a warrior who had to face a lion and took on the beast killing it with a single pinpoint knee strike. Now, as much as that probably falls into the category of romanticized myth, it does lead to the idea that much of the techniques were based off animal styles, which was very common in the Asian martial arts. The curriculum of Bokator is robust, to say the least. Based on the animal movements of the crane, horse, snakes, lions, eagles, and many more, there are over 340 sets in the art that are based on living examples of nature. So think about that the next time you complain that your art has too many katas. Bokator is complex and it employs an exceptionally diverse curriculum of techniques. 
It focuses on various strikes that include elbows, knees, kicks, as well as joint locks, throws, submissions, and do not be surprised if you find your opponent literally climbing you and dropping some pain. It is incredibly versatile and is said to have up to 10,000 individual techniques, which gives fighters an almost infinite combination to use. Boca Tour does include a colored ranking system designated by the Krama or type of scarf. Colored grades typically are ranked as white, green, blue, red, brown, and black. They also typically wear silk cords around their heads and biceps, and in the early days, it was believed to give the fighter strength and luck. Exhibitive, yet brutal, and battlefield tested, Boca Tour is definitely a solid entry on this list. This one is an interesting addition to the list, one, because it's one of the few fighting systems developed and considered indigenous to the United States. It's also an art of interest because its official status seems to be contested and debated. Jailhouse Rock refers to a handful of different hand-to-hand -hand fighting styles developed and or used in the United States prison system. Some of these various styles are referred to as Sato, Comstock style, or the most common one, 52 hand blocks, or 52 blocks for short. The techniques of 52 blocks are generally close combat, using lots of elbows for blocking and striking, bum rushing, rolling punches, and lots of street fighting and boxing strikes. The upper body should always be moving and footwork should be applied with bare fist fighting and confined spaces in mind. Now sometimes the name is attributed to the brutal fighting method of placing 52 playing cards on the ground and the practitioner has to pick them all up in order while fending off, you know, one, two, maybe even three possible attackers. It could even be a reference, coded, symbolic, or otherwise to a specific cell block. However, a more likely explanation is that it simply refers to 52 blocking techniques encompassed in the art. In any case, even with a vague and disputed origin, 52 blocks can be found taught today in various gyms, and it is a practical self-defense style that is growing in popularity. KC is another interesting art that is extremely young in the context of martial arts, and it was also the martial art featured and taught to Christian Bale as Batman in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. Now this was a great choice for that character, but we'll come back to that in a second. Casey comes from Spanish roots and was developed by Justo Diegas in 1980. He grew up in a small mining town of Seville in Spain, and growing up he found himself in a conflict and struggles and he was determined to find a way to defend himself and stand his ground. Now Diegas has experience in Filipino Kali, Jeet Kune Do, and boxing, and taking those arts and mixing it with real life street fighting experience, he developed the Casey fighting method. Now according to the official website, the birth of the word Casey dates from the early childhood of Justo Diegas. As a small child who was learning to speak, he had his own special way of pronouncing the words in Spanish, KC, which means, yes, I will. What makes KC so unique is that it's a system of self-defense that is intended to focus on a 360-degree fighting environment. Its objective is to teach the combatant how to defend themselves against multiple attackers, and you can see this influence in the close, compact strikes and elbows that the system employs. The concept is practical, with multiple people trying to hit you, many of them have to reach out to get to you, but by staying tight and keeping strikes close range, you can deal with the immediate threat without having to reach outward and giving the attackers more to work with. And this is why the art has picked up popularity for the characters such as Batman and even in the Jack Reacher films. When the fight scenes need to be quick, compact, and perhaps even look a little more unique and exotic, there you go. After Andy Norman, the co-founder of the KC Fighting Method, left to work on his own organization called Defense Lab, KFM has been renamed to simply KC by Justo Diegas. It would be so easy to continue this list as there are many, many more arts that we could have mentioned and included such as Taekyeon, Kalari Payatu, Sistema, Ledrit, and more, but these could easily be subjects of their own videos. We could also go into much more depth on any of the arts that we talked about today, and if there are any particular that you'd like us to talk about more, please let us know in the comments below. We depend on our viewers to keep this channel going, so if you haven't yet checked out our Patreon or YouTube memberships, click on the join button below and you'll see a video explaining the perks and exclusive content that you will have access to. Thank you all so much for watching.